Chapter 9. Freshman Year My freshman year had arrived with great anticipation. I was attending Indian High School. This year my dad had to enroll three of his kids into high school. My sister Holly and I were good at playing volleyball. The school had a sports camp that started two weeks before school started. My sister and I headed out early for this camp. Up to this point, I had flown in small planes and even been a pilot once, but I had never been on a big plane or to a huge airport. My sister had traveled the year before and knew what to do. I was not prepared for the heat. Red River on a hot day reached maybe 70 degrees with a cool ocean breeze. Phew, hot. We had staff on their way to pick us up. No meeting point or set up time to be at a certain place or nothing. My sister Holly and I had been at this airport for hours now and knew it from top to bottom. She felt confident enough to spit, to split up and look for the staff separately. At 1 a.m. I was scanning the crowd for the six foot four guy with glasses. When the six foot four guy with glasses was on the second floor spied me. Could, could see you look like the one I'm looking for. I froze and he come down the steps asking if I was related to Holly. I said yes and we waited for Holly to come back to the meeting place and started to travel by van to the campus. I never been on the freeway before and we're flying down the road 55 miles per hour. Wow, so many lights, I thought. Why? We passed the Danny's and asked if he wanted fries or a burger. My sister immediately said, no, we are just going to go to sleep when we get to the campus. I would have gone to Denny's just to eat something at 2 a.m. in the morning. When we arrived at the school, we seen fields of grass, a water tower, and a football field. Amazing. We got settled in for the night. I could not, I could not sleep much, too hot, and the crickets were making so much noise. Holly woke me up the next day to get ready for the day. We headed to breakfast and then for a long day in the sun, a volleyball practice. At first, my sister and I were roommates in dorm nine that lasted about two weeks. My sister transferred me over to the smart people dorm seven. This was a co-ed dorm and did not last long either. My sister and I did not grow up together, so it was difficult to relate or get along. She said that I had to go to be a freshman and make my own friends. Hmm. How do I make my own friends, I thought. The very next day during home economics, the teacher gave us an assignment to get to know your classmates project. He said to pick a person to ask questions. Everyone at my table split except for Brad. We looked at each other and said, I guess we get to ask each other questions. Logically, I started out with what kind of Indian are you question. Brad stated he was a Sioux Indian. I wrote down S-U-E Indian. He looked at my paper and seeing I spelled Sue wrong, him and Corey laughed and corrected me. Brad became my first friend my sister told me to seek out. A couple of weeks went by and I noticed this native gal had pretty much the same classes and I started to sit by her and slowly started to talk to her. Amber was her name. So now I could report to my sister I had made two friends. She rolled her eyes and said, go make more. To this day, I'm not sure why she didn't like me. In the end, it did force me to get out there more on my own and try. High school was basically the same. English, math, science, home economics, and gym were my favorites. I was in a good health and in good shape in high school. I went to gym class and did the workouts for about a month. I noticed there was a pregnant gal and they made her do the workouts. I did not agree. So I started to protest and not do the workouts and stated I work out on my own time. I stated that I did not need these grueling stupid exercises. The teacher did not know what to do with me and left me alone. 
about a week went by and I sat on the sidelines and the teacher was like, you don't want to exercise, you can do laundry and clean. Done deal. She said, of course, she of course did not give me my gym credit. At the end of the semester, she said that she never wanted to see me again as long as she worked there. I totally agreed. There was a natural resources class that took up two class periods that I had signed up for. We learned about how useful trees were to the earth and went out and planted trees for the rest of the semester. It was so much fun. One hot afternoon, we were going back to class when we heard this humming. It was got louder the closer we got to the school building, and then this huge dark cloud was heading towards us. Scary and loud. Suddenly, this dark cloud was upon us. Bees on the move. So loud. We raced to get inside the school because bee stragglers started to check us out. No one was hurt, but we were all out of breath. Basketball was a popular sport that everyone supported. That basketball coach knew his job well. My brother Henry was a good basketball player. With the cat coach's help, he made him an exceptional ball player. That basketball coach took all the athletes from different places and melded them together to be winners. The basketball games were intense. The coach honed each individual player's skills and pushed them to their limits. <coughs> wow, what a time to be at a home game. This home game we were playing got so loud and intense, the score was tied with seconds on the clock when we stole the ball and raced to our side of the court. With a pass to the inside man, he jumped and threw the ball for the shot. The ball circled three times. It had just about dropped in to just almost out of the basket. Everyone was standing trying to help the ball drop in for the shot. As the horn blew, it slowly circled to drop in for the winning basket. Go team! I really enjoyed being a spectator to all the home games. I was always busy and kept myself in excellent shape, but I did not join sports. I am not an athletic person. So Christmas time came and time to travel back to Red River for the two-week vacation. My dad had moved to town for the winter. We had stayed in a Filipino boarding house where you rent a room and share the rest of the house. We had tickets to Red River and wanted to go for the winter vacation. My dad and Betty were going to stay in town for the school break. He said if we wanted to go home, he would order fuel and lights for us. My uncle was in the village to keep an eye on us. With enough food to feed the village, we headed to Red River the next day. Over the years, we had all our meals cooked by adults and served to us. I cooked simple things like top ramen and canned foods before. Dad had known this and got us easy stuff to cook. We got to the house on Friday afternoon with barely any stove fuel. The flame was just enough to keep the place from freezing. Brother and I settled in and he said he should cook at least one hour before we would get hungry. So this is what happened on the first night. We had a coffee maker for the hot water to make tea and cup of noodles. We unpacked the food and brother decided we should eat hot dogs and hot ramen for dinner. Brother was busy in the room and hollered what I was to do to make the hot dogs. I heard him say to heat the water up in the coffee pot and put the dogs in the water. Simple, right? Hot water was done. I hollered what to do again. He said the same thing and I hollered, are you sure? He said, Jenny, just do it. So I took the hot dogs out of the plastic and started to slide a hot dog in the coffee pot where you pour from. Just at that moment, my friend Brandy comes around the corner and asks, what are you doing? I felt a little funny sliding that hot dog in the pot anyways. So when my friend Brandy came around the corner, asked me what I was doing. I could only laugh at myself. Brother comes rushing into the kitchen to see what was so funny. He just said, Jenny, and shook his head back and forth laughing. I did not hear him say 
He put a pot over the burner and to put the hot water from the coffee maker in the pot on the stove. So funny. Coffee dogs. In the winter, we had three hills to slide on when it wasn't slick with ice. One of the hills was just outside our house. When the nights were clear and, I st and still out, my brother and I would gear up to go sledding. We tried to get the other kids to go sliding at night. No one joined us. Sometimes we had to get a couple of others to go, but most nights we were by ourselves. Out of snow, out of town on a beautiful, clear winter night, there are so many stars. I didn't know any of the names of the stars of constellations. The Big Dipper and the Small Dipper were about the only ones we knew for sure. Wow, breathtaking, crisp, cool air and seeing your breath float away into oblivion was awesome. The endless black sky with millions of stars twinkling back at us was incredible. The air is so clean you could taste and smell the ocean and the earth. Exhausted from sli sliding and climbing the hill we would just lay down in the snow to see what was out there in the endless display of stars. Sometimes we were lucky enough to see a shooting star or the northern light. Traveling back to school was always exciting. I had always loved to travel. I did not mind having layovers. It was time to see what airports were made of and what was in it. In Seattle Airport, there were these chairs that had a small television attached to it. You put 25 cents in, it gave you a choice of 10 to 15 channels and 15 minutes of view. Most of our flights into Seattle were at nighttime. So many lights. I used to think what a waste of so much electricity. We had no electricity when we were going up into the old village. We rose at daybreak and was close to bedtime by the time night fell. I could not believe so many people in one area working together to live life. I thought this is only one city. How many out there? More out there just wasting electricity. Amazing. The other students from the lower 48 travel by train or bus. Large groups would join up at one point and head to the campus for the second half of the school year. There were two destinations for our students to go and hang out on the weekends. The mall uptown and the city center. The public bus routes would take us there if we went to the local grocery store or Kmart. Taking the city bus was a new and great way to get somewhere without your own vehicle. We are far from home, far from places you can only get to on your own two feet. Living on village time my whole life, we could not seem to catch the last bus of the day. So <laughs> you either pull together your dough and cab it or walk. We always came to the same conclusion, save my money and walk. Walking back from the uptown mall is a shorter walk than from the city center by a long shot. The hike back to campus from the mall was on a straightaway until you hit the local grocery store. Traffic and the smell of exhaust was new to us. <clears throat> Most of the time we hit the back, ro back roads and took our time. Near the campus there is a playground where we would hang out and rest before the final trek to campus. This had some swings and benches to rest on if we were quiet. When we were hiking back to campus from the city center, the route we always took was the railroad tracks. They were right, they go right past the old campus. I had seen many trains on television and I heard them from campus, but never actually seen one on the rails. Wow, when we heard a train come in, we would all check to see what kind of coins we had to smush on the tracks. Not too many, though, because you can't spend smushed coins. We would spend the next half hour looking for our treasures you couldn't spend. On our way again, with our smushed coins, we come across the old school cemetery. We went to look at the names on the headstones and found one that had written on it, Davy Crockett. No fooling. Saw it with my own eyes. We would always say a prayer and be on our way. 
Next came a bridge, not a very long one, a train that could come out at any time and force us to jump or run. No train ever came at the right time. How rude. Leaving behind the train tracks up come the old campus, the only buildings left with part of the clinic and the old cookhouse. My dad had gone to school here when these buildings were in use. Ancient. I had heard many stories of students seeing sets of eyes there at night. Of course, I got a group together to go see these buildings the next weekend. At night, when you could get closer to the old campus, it gets quiet and eerie feeling. It almost felt like going back in time. Your imagination leads you to old Indian grounds in an abandoned area. First question, why is it abandoned by the Indians? Indians just don't abandon good grounds. Second question, why the heck are we out here at the corner of a campus with bad lighting? So we get closer to the building we see in the daylight a week ago and it does not look the same. Shadows are cast and windows are blackened with darkness. We went left to circle the creepy looking old clinic and came across a break in the fence. <coughs> Third question was seen across all our faces. Do we dare go inside the perimeter? One of the girls stated that she was too scared to go in and too scared to wait for us to explore. Some continued along the outside of the fence and kept an eye on the blackened windows. When we got out to the corner of the fence and one of the guys hollered and said he seen a set of eyes in the basement between two boards, we stopped and looked when we saw them too. The girls took off running and screaming for the stadium. When this girl screamed, the sets of eyes jumped out of the basement and jumped into turned into a cat. 